I believe that the freedom of speech is a universal international right, that all opinions shall be tolerated regardless if agreeable or disagreeable. I believe in the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, freedom of expression, freedom of religion, not from it, freedom of the press, the right of the people to peaceably assemble, be it physically or spiritually or digitally or virtually, I believe in the separation of church and state and corporation. I believe that truth is non-binary and can be objective, subjective, normative, or complex. There are no eternal facts as there are no absolute truths except the word of God. For us creators and for our content, great thinkers have philosophized, and our founding fathers debated the dangers of cancellation and censorship for centuries. And no individual shall be indemnified of criticism or mockery, for there is honesty in jest. I pledge that the ideas I share are my own and are not the expressed opinions of any violent criminal organizations. The only group I represent is the human race, and I reserve the right to interview any of my counterparts without fear, threat, or intimidation, with their opinions being their own, with my opinions being my own, for association does not always equal shared beliefs. I pledge to perform in a professional, dignified manner and to not bully, harass, or slander my fellow human creatures, to refrain from hate, anger, sedition, vulgarity, harassment, pornography, cautioning that sarcasm can at times be misinterpreted as such. I believe in the counter-speech doctrine, that the remedy to negative, harmful speech is more positive, helpful speech, not enforced silence that no person shall be denied access to social media, which is the marketplace of ideas, and today's town square, that Section 230 privatizes communism and legalizes libel and stalking, and that content creators who have broken community guidelines in the past deserve retribution because we are all constituents of the human party and humans are fallible. Amen. Pow! All right, guys, get ready, settle in. We are... Here, ready to do a... What is it? 96? 96 episode. Yeah, 96. Yep. 96 episode. And I just want to say a prayer. Nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. I want to pray. Dear Lord Jesus, please. The the person who um, suppresses the algorithm at YouTube, let that person have a... uh, Heavy conversion or something, and uh, let them come around to allowing some retribution in case for this uh, podcast so that we get out there and we're able to reach people uh, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Oh my God, we are talking about John the Baptist today. Again. <coughs> Two incense enthusiasts. Bringing you your On the pugative way. Hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. I. Oh, I like this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're on the pugative way. Okay, yeah. And I'm not talking about whey protein. I'm talking about <laughs> the way hmm. of spiritual enlightenment. And there are three steps, and we are on the pugative way. We're incense enthusiasts. We're not priests. No, we we're not, not prophets. We're prophets. But we are. And we, we are, are for profit. We are for yeah. profit. We are not. We are not not profit. But we we are just podcasters who have done our research, though. Yes, and I then will say that. So we like talking about Catholicism, mm-hmm. and we go to mass daily. Do we need to go over this again? 
I mean, I don't. I'm not. So gonna, this is a daily show. There's not a day that goes no. by that we haven't done it in the last 96, 96 days. days. So continuing with wow. that tradition, let us let us now enter into <laughs> this 96 day as we discuss our feast day celebration of John the Baptist. That's right. Today, the gospel of the passion, not of the Christ, but of mm. St. John the Baptist. It's obligatory. However, for the first reading, one can choose between the text, blah, 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 of the Monday of the 22nd week in ordinary time or those of the memorial. This is all the inside baseball stuff you get oh, right here. Okay. The passion of St. John the Baptist. I, I included every, we could just read all of them. Okay. The passion of St. John the Baptist reveals that to die for the truth is not to die in vain. Hmm. Yep. John the Baptist's courageous preaching about the truth of marriage earned him imprisonment and death. But now he re he reigns gloriously with Christ who conquered death. Herod, we are told, had even enjoyed listening to John. If only Herod had realized that the repentance John preached was not merely a nice idea, but a life-changing possibility for him too. St. John the Baptist, pray for us. Pray that we per persevere in fidelity to the truth of the gospel and that we never doubt the mercy of God. So that's basically the, uh, you know, hmm. that, that the vibe of, of today. So when we're talking about the mm -hmm. passion. Yeah. Of something, we're you know, mm -hmm. but you, but what are we talking are we? about? I, I I asked you earlier before the the show started, and you are blasted on the incense. No, not totally. Not totally. No. Okay, your eyes are so red. Oh my, oh, my god! One is yeah. I was rubbing. <laughs> yeah, got something in my eye earlier. Oh, you did. That's what that yeah. is. Okay. On the one, yeah. Oh, it's still kind of. Okay, so yeah. you're having like allergic reaction, probably to the cat. Mm, get it honestly i get it so yeah so today um so when you say the passion of the christ mm -hmm. what is that well I'll is there it, anything in the or oh, yeah, yeah tell me, me tell me tell me uh, i'll first say how i how i viewed it then and still how i view it really it's like the i would call it almost excessive devotion to how can i put it good virtues and goodness like the goodness out of people, like showing compassion, showing love, like that is like passion, the, like, compassion. Yeah, they com both. I mean, right, right. Like, I mean, I'm not using it just for that, but I mean, like, you can passionately feel any of those. So I feel like any like kind of passion on something is more of a like almost also like a severe, uh, severe devotion, maybe something along those lines. Like, it just basically. Maybe even hyper religiosity mm. type stuff on one focus. That's Is it how really? I kinda, that's how I always think of it, or I have thought of it. I should say. Okay. And um, what I found here it says in Christianity the passion, um, page uh, it's also a Latin verb meaning to suffer, bear, endure, from which also patient and uh, being a patient. In the short Ooh. final period of the life of Jesus Christ, so there the that last part of his life there, all those things that he felt, no, like no matter what that pain was, he had passion for his cause. Right, that he was to die for our sins. Did you ring the bell, by the way? I gave that to you for a reason. Give me the bell back I, now. I'll give you the bell back. Sorry. You can't have the bell now. All right. Anyway, okay. um, so the passion. That's how right. So that's what um at least that's what I see here in when it's describing with Jesus. And also I looked as well with Saint with uh John the Baptist, the last moments of his life, how he still felt um how did you describe it before with John the Baptist? He still like kept to his word. Yeah. Like how he stuck he to stuck that. He stuck to it. 
and stuck to it no ma- to the very end, even knowing what was to happen. Like maybe he didn't know he was going to be beheaded for the uh, what was it, the stepdaughter or whatever of King Harold, but he knew he probably was going to be killed. Yeah, and yet he still sat there and faced it, kind of like a real G, like just mm-hmm. did not mm-hmm. budge on it at all. Mm-hmm. So that's also like how I see him, like he with that passion, meaning like stay true to your word and to your belief, like don't cave your belief per se, just for someone else or or to get out of something or for an easier route. Like if this is. If you're you right. are to be you're crucified right. for yes. your belief, yes. then be crucified. Let's do the reading, shall we? We'll learn yeah. a little bit more. Here, let me do the first. All right. All right. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me thus. Gird your joins. Gird your loins. Sorry. Stand up and tell them all that I command you. Be not crushed on their account as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. What are you looking at? Now, what the next one you have, because I have both of them as well, but they're on different pages. So what's the next one you want to read? Then there's Psalm 71. 71? All right. Okay. You got Psalm 71? Uh, Yeah, I will sing your salvation. Sure. I I will will sing sing your salvation. salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. I I will will sing sing your salvation. Be my rock to refuge and stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. Oh, my God, rescue me. From that hand of the wicked. I I will will sing sing your salvation. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust. O God, from my youth on you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb you are my strength. I I will will sing sing your salvation. salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice day by day your salvation. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth until the present. I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing your salvation. Now, before we get into the doing all the hallelujah stuff, mm-hmm. let's be real nerds and read the alternative as well. Okay. Can we do that? Yeah. Let me read the Corinthians. Uh, yep. When, when I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. And then Psalm 119. Yeah. Lord, I love your commands. Lord, I love your command. How I love your law, O Lord. It is my meditation all the day. Lord, Lord, I I love love your your commands. commands. Your command has made me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. Lord, Lord, I I love love your your commands. commands. I have more understanding than all my teachers. When your decrees are my meditation. Lord, Lord, I I love love your your commands. commands. I have more discernment than the elders because I observe your precepts. Lord, Uh, I love your commands. commands. From every evil way, I withhold my feet. 
that I may keep your words. Lord, Lord, I I love love your your command. command. From your ordinances, I turn not away, for you have instructed me. Lord, Lord, I I love love your your commands. Hmm. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Mm -hmm. And now from the gospel of Mark, do you have? Yes. Okay. Herod was the one. Herod. Herod. Herod was the one who had John the Baptist arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, whom he had married, John had said to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but was unable to do so. Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, and kept him in custody. When he heard him speak, he was very much perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. She had an opportunity one day when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his court, courtler, courtiers, uh, his military officer, and the leading men of Galilee. Herodias' own daughter came in and performed a dance that delighted Herod and his guest. The king said to the girl, Ask of me whatever you wish, and I will grant it to you. He even swore many things to her. I will grant you whatever you ask of me, even the half, even half of, to half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptist. The girl, the girl hurried back to the king's presence, and made her request. I want you to give me at once on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply distressed, but because of his oath and the guest he did not wish to break her word to to her, so he promptly dispatched an executioner with order to bring back his head. He went off and beheaded him in the prison. He brought in the head on a platter and gave it to the girl. The girl, in turn, gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Buddy Uh, is totally running in his sleep. It's so hilarious. Oh, totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) He's absolutely running in his sleep. See if he does it again. Anyway. But oh. um, so yeah. That was it, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. No, um, what what? Is, I mean so all right. We've read that before. Yes, we have. We read that not too long ago. Um month ish ago, maybe. Yes. Now let me break it down here. Mm-hmm. Because there's a reason for that. So what are you willing to die for? What are you willing to die for, Parker? Hmm. Hmm? What are you willing to die for? Anything? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to think on how to sum it up. Like, well, I want to say I would I would die for the country. Of course, meaning how I think of it. Ooh, if you get a, what I mean by that, I'm not thinking. By the way, if, if uh if out there you want to participate, eight six six nine seven zero nine 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 seven, extension one, and then um, we you can maybe maybe add to this list. Yeah, what we're talking about anyway. And I would die for my family. Do you have any of that, anything I else? Would. You die for your family. I would definitely die for my family. I would die for my friends. Mm-hmm. The yeah, I would definitely die for my friend, family, and country. For your friends? Yeah. How good of a friend do you have to be to, to die? 
Well, um, is there a level? How can I put this? Basically, anybody who doesn't have to question it, they know. Mm. Buddy, stop. (laughs) Well, anyway, I mean, that's a a serious question because this guy, what he did is he went and he died for this. He died for mm-hmm. because you know his he was the he was the um well his predecessor was coming bef- behind him yes right so I think it was three years prior in when basically the the him. the meaning of life really mm-hmm. should be that whatever it is that you would do like think about I know that you just talked about who you would die for but. What are you willing to die for? That's the question I asked. It was not who are you willing to die for. What you, what you started with your country, you started with your family. What that's what you. But I'm talking about like conviction. Is there any kind of conviction? Is there any like way that you uh, you know you live your life? And somebody would say, listen, if you if you don't if you do this or you refuse to do this or whatever you're going to die. And you would say, you know what? I don't care the the line is in the sand and I will not go ahead. Kill me. Go ahead. Has nothing to do with your family on the line. Nothing. It's about a moral dilemma, a character, mm. a characteristic. Is there anything like that? A belief like as in John the Baptist. Now what he was, do you understand what he really, his thing was like what he was going against? It was marriage, the sanctity of marriage. Well, he didn't, he did not approve of the, of the marriage to, he was the the daughter of, he was telling uh, Herod what he was doing wrong. Right. <clears throat> and uh, he was defending the same day of marriage, like he said. Like I said, his uh, his principal f- feast day, right, mm. is the day of his birth, right? Which is unlike all the other saints, uh, uh, other than Mary, Mary and, and Jesus, Jesus, right? Yep. But um, and that's tw- that's June twenty fourth. You're yep. right. It was like a month ago, or whatever. So today is the feast day of his death. Hmm. It's okay, the passion, okay. right? That's why you have that. That's why you have the two. Well, that makes sense. It's I a mean, th- it's a third rate feast day. It's a third class. Okay, feast day. Um, other saints' death days are days they will enter into eternal life without sin, right? Mm-hmm. But because John, Johnny Boy, mm-hmm. right? He already had. Supposedly, I think him, Jesus, and Mary supposedly didn't have original sin or something like that. I'd have to look I, more into it, but there's that was kind of what I was getting from it. Okay. Other saints that days are days they were they will enter into eternal life without sin. He was already there. I mean, look, do you yeah, know what I'm saying? He no, was I know going, what you're saying. Yeah. He was going to, this is the, I'm talking about the rationale of the Catholic Church from a from an intense and incense enthusiast's perspective. All right, I like that. No, because I see he died, he died for a cause. He didn't die for anyone. Yes. Any, and when I say anything, I mean like a physical object. He. That's correct. Like a, like a relic per oh. se. There are, th- what is it? It's, um, so in sales, right? There's tangible and there's intangible sales. There's two kinds of yeah. sales. I know. I've heard those terms okay. before. Maybe yeah. I told you this before. Maybe. Tangible sales are things that you can touch. Mm-hmm. Things that, you know, a house, sell a car, things that you could touch. Intangible sales are things that you could only, phew, Kind of imagine, per se? Yeah. I don't want to say imagine. A mortgage, insurance. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Stocks. 
Okay, stocks. Is, I uh, I understand it more when you say stocks. Yep. Maybe, maybe, but maybe stocks is more. T- maybe it could be. I don't know. Tangible because it's money too. But anyway, I, th- that's maybe a debate. I'm not sure. But anyway, do you get it? There's yes. tangible and intangible. Yeah. Things that you can touch, things that you can't. Well, it's kind of like this. So he was dying for something that you can't touch. Like you can kind of. Mm, I think even. Even the country you can touch. I know it's uh it's a it's a it's a it's a thought, it's an idea yeah. also. But you live here, we're we're living on this land, you have a house on this land, you know, or an apartment on this land, this is where you live, right? As an American or whatever country you 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 are. Mm-hmm. So that's real. That's a pretty real thing to die for. Hmm. Yeah, that's a deep Freedom question. is a pretty... Th- Free- is would probably, that would be my next one. But it would be the closest, I think, would be that to, I think, being a vet or something would be the closest probably to religious martyr, martyrdom. Yeah. martyrdom. Probably, for at least for me, because I don't... I, I will say I don't believe I would die for a religious belief. At least where I am today in my life, No. But you would die for your country, though. Yes. Okay. So I think it comes down to it probably indirectly anyway. Um. Oh, yeah. Probably but there's nothing that you definitely. would like. You, there's nothing that if somebody said this. Hmm. Something intangible. Dude, you you better like pronounce this or that or whatever. And if you don't do that, I will. I am going to blow your brains out. Boom. Nothing. Well, the only reason I guess I will have tr- I struggle with answering it is because I have in my path out, like giving up certain things in life. It's not that it's easy, not by any means whatsoever. But it can be done. Because like the way I think of it is when you were a child at like four years old or so, probably actually more like probably three to five, I would say. There basically was nothing worldly that you were really doing, you know, like as in actively in your mind. You just lived at the moment day by day. You didn't need, let's say, your favorite coffee drink or caffeinated drink. You didn't need any anything any kind of vice that's out in the world so i feel like you can get back to that everybody can get to that point again no matter where they are or what they've been through that's my belief so i could i feel like if somebody really had to be given up for whatever reason i could do it however would i do it forcibly no so i guess that's why i would say like freedom I would die for. Mm-hmm. Meaning, All right. like, if it's a suggested thing to stop, I would. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, and oh, sorry, Matthew, Mark mentions um, mm-hmm. mentions this thing in detail. Right. The 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 gospel reading that you read. Yep. About the beheading, and then also Luke nine refers to it a little bit. Just so oh, you know. Okay. Um, and then good cannot tolerate evil. Evil cannot tolerate good. That's a, that's one takeaway I got from my research. I do like that. And I, I see and so like, cause I was, I was thinking like, that's pretty, I don't, is that, I don't want to use that. Is that a bad word? Ballsy to, or, or I don't even know if it's, it's, is it misplaced? Should you even be opining about the, about the, uh, the, the marriage of your King? I mean, I don't know, but he was, he was op- being very opinionated about somebody else's uh, sinful ways. Well, I guess the- to be to be putting that to I mean, is that really the line to cross? I mean, the 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 line to set in the sand. The only reason I would say yes is because back in those times, like it didn't matter really who the king or the queen were, like the religious leaders per se of the area like the leader of the diocese or the monastery uh yeah they were more of the the leader of that land not the king ain't much like yeah the king obviously you know taxes and other things like that but 
I mean, all the people go to the monastery and pray with them and other things, right? If the church back then would say that king is uh, spewing heresies, he must be taken down. Uh, you best believe that they, the town people probably would attempt something. There would be some kind of revolt, whether whether it be successful or not. Yes. But I feel like the church controlled a lot more back then, even if it didn't have like that physical, tangible. I don't power. think you're you're really answering my uh, question, but it's fine. Um all right. So good okay. cannot tolerate evil and evil cannot tolerate good. I mean, yeah. How does that apply to what you're saying? Well, you were talking about the king and everything. That's where I was. He went, yeah. About like it. I mean, yeah. and plus he went, yeah. I mean, he's th he's this guy, John the Baptist, right? Yes. And he's going, and he's he's a he's opining, yeah, on somebody else's marriage. That's what I was, and in. that person's also the king. Oh well, then okay. The king it, doesn't control anything there. Well, what I'm saying is that the church has more influence. He wasn't in the. Was he in the church? What kind? I thought it was like some kind of offshoot church. You're talking about, or, John, is, or was he I'm Jewish? I'm talking about John the Baptist. John, was John the Baptist Jewish? Well, he was a follower of Jesus Christ. He was, but no, he came before Jesus Christ. Well, yes, I. He was killed before Jesus. He came before him. I know that. Yes, but I believe that he was a follower of Jesus's teaching. That he got older when he was still. When Jesus was starting to perform those miracles and become the person that I don't know what happened when you hit it. Hello, one two. Okay, there you go. Okay, all right. Don't touch um, it. It looks like a wire's coming out over there, dude. On the top. All right. Don't don't. That's where no. That's where, that's connected to the thing here. Right. You have that as well on yours. It's no, yeah. it looks like a little bit of a wire is exposed. It's fine. It's All fine. Right. Let's move on, please. So uh, don't, yeah, don't touch the thing. Just leave it there. So John had to speak truth to power, okay? Yeah. Uh, Herodias needed to have John murdered, right? Mm -hmm. That's the stepdaughter. That's the, of, that, of, of the, uh, the wife of his, of, um, his brother. Yeah. Philip. And then she <clears throat> was dancing in a lewd list. Li Lascivious way. I don't know what that word is. Um, you know, but but basically, and then he. I don't know why. For her birthday or something like or whatever, whatever his, is going on. Is it? And it, he granted her a wish, just sort of like. And know. it's just such a. It's a kind of a. Let me use this word. Cuck move. Yes. And he said that you could even have like half of my kingdom. What? This is insane for some girl who's what? It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't, and it's not that it's, like, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense why he would do that, it, and it not be his own flesh and blood. I understand loving the stepchild. I do. I, I just don't see it how... I don't really see that translating there. I don't know. It's very weird. weird. He yeah. had a weird... So, basically, he had a weird relationship going on. This is a weird thing. I and, mean, and then and then and then uh, and this guy, he said, "You got a weird relationship going on." You know what? Now that you say it like that, honestly, good for you, John. Good for John the Baptist for doing that. Yeah, you it, think so? Well, would you do it? No, if you're in that situation, you would not. You would probably keep your mouth not, shut. You would go right along with everything. You know, probably not in the situation as in like... Oh, you'd be going well, right along with everything. And then what I'm saying on this is that because I've done it with friends before, I've opposed two, two of my friends, or well, one, one of my friends trying to get married to this girl. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I opposed from the beginning. I then, I think under a month of their relationship because I've met her like maybe three, four times. And I just was like, yeah, no. I'm like, no, she, the, she is a terrible person. And everybody was like, you're, you're wrong. You're being, you're being uh, judgmental and all this stuff. I'm like, okay. 
A year later when they're about to get yes, a year later when they're about to get married. Yes. A week before, she breaks it off. And tries to take his car, his mo- uh, credit card from him as well. Part of the house that he bought for him that was his own house. He bought it before knowing her. And she tried to take half of that. They weren't even married yet. And she still tried to take all that. So she didn't get anything. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, look, guys, I was right. Everybody want to apologize to me now and realize it? <laughs> no, not really. I didn't. So, yeah, there's times there's in your times life. You don't, done you, it. you don't have to. Uh, we don't have to break it down to getting yeah. actually killed. No. It doesn't have to go to that extreme. No. But we get it. Yeah. I, all right. So uh, the saint of the day we covered. Mm. That basically, just to recap, the passion of St. John the Baptist. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, Hmm. whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Can you believe that? And with fire? Ooh. Yes. Yes, okay, that's right. I get it. I get it with the fire. That makes sense. Um, take that call or no? Hold on. Did you want to go? We're live. Did you want to come on? On? Yeah. Hello. Oh. Hello. How you doing? This is Kim Coulter. Can I say that? Uh oh, I already said it. <laughs> it's all right. You can say it. Hey, what's up? How are you? you I'm doing great. Hi, blessed and highly favored. How about you? Nice. I mean, I, 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 I hope so. I'm just trying to be, I'm just, you know, fallible person trying to live day to day. That's it. Amen to that, brother. So what would you like to uh, participate in or, or add to the discussion? What, what, well, yeah. um, I, if this would be a good class. You, I'm sure all of your... Well, well, educated audience has been paying attention to the Ashley Biden diaries. Okay, yes, yeah. the two people in Florida, uh, Amy Harris and Robert Kirchlander. Right, those two. Well, they, hello. Yes. Well, I I don't know if you guys are aware, but the the um the place or my publication where I'm a journalist is the only place right now that's hosted the Ashley Biden diaries. Really? We were actually we were responsible for getting it exposed. Oh. Uh wasn't that Project Veritas? Project Veritas got it, but we are the ones who exposed it. Wow. And that was uh with National File, right? National File, that's the place. Nice. We're all, like I said, we're also currently still the only place that's hosting it. That's awesome. All that's right. Very- well, uh- let me, let me. Well, I mean, the real world implication here is that our our president and chief is uh, is a pedo in office. Wow. Well, have you have you read? As if he couldn't, as if he couldn't get more corrupt. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Now, where do I find? I I'm, oh. I'm on here. It says it looks like I typed in Ashley Biden national file, and it says it looks like the results below are changing quickly. Which, I wouldn't be surprised. We've been heavily suppressed for a long time. You know, we, we've we been sub- subjected to many lawsuits, people trying to shut us down because we're one of the only places that's really ready and willing to go up to bat to offer real news. I, I, I went and Googled your name just like I did, and it didn't come up. Isn't that crazy? The link didn't I, come, I believe that. The link didn't come well, right up. Like, I know. It's just insane. It really is insane that you have to, like, go searching for it. Probably go to number two or something like, but if you go into national file.com, then you do find it. Uh, oh yeah. If you go into national file.com and search and into our search function, you should be able to find a whole bunch of stuff that we've written about the diary that exposing the diary in the first place. It was actually brought to us by one of our senior reporters, Patrick Howley, which I'm sure a lot of people also recognize. He's mm-hmm. a very, ex- you know, experienced and very, um, I can't well, find no, the, oh, there it is. There's a search thing. All right. Keep talking. Sorry. Yeah. My apologies. Oh, I was just singing the praises of Patrick Howley and his investigative journalism skills. Um, he's brought a lot of good information out to light about a lot of very corrupt people, and we're, we're very blessed to have him on our team. Mm-hmm. All right. Now I'm sharing the show. Now, now I'm sharing the, uh, 
the screen right now with this court docs. Actually, Biden's diary was abandoned alongside Biden Foundation bag. Other personal effects. Okay. So yeah, so nobody nobody stole it or anything. No, like it that. was well. That's that's the crazy part because they got those two guys to plead guilty to to stealing. Um, but the diary itself, it was just left behind. Hmm. I know that. I know that's the thing. Yeah, that, that's but, the, weird. but you know what though? It's like, what are we gonna do though? You know, what are we gonna do? Well, that's a good question. Where do we go from here? You know, there's a lot of question about that. But the fact of the matter is, so to begin with, this just needs to be more publicly available information. In my opinion, this is the Biden. I've said this before. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Biden is a Catholic, right? Well, yeah. At least he claims Catholicism. He claims Catholicism, and he goes a uh, he goes a mass regularly. Supposedly, now his uh, his son is a classic Catholic kid, Catholic school kid, just run amok completely. I I He's know like the king of the bad Catholic kids. I know people like this. That's why I you know it's 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 weird because that's what is redeemable about it. Weird in a weird way, and I and probably a lot of people know people like this in their own families. Crazy, oh my, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, so. It's weird. I don't. I don't know. I could see. I could see like the humanity in Biden, even though he's uh, he's a he's a scum too, but he's not. Well, he, robotically. Yeah, you're right. He's not robotically a scum. He's a human, and there's and there's many facets to to all the levels of what's going on and what yeah. has led to the current state. In, in, well, I mean, if he's molesting his daughter, he's a uh, he's a. He's a bad guy. He's not. A, he's not just robotically bad. Oh like, my! Is he really though? That, is that, that what's is, going well, on what though? For real? That's this was, what, yeah. that's, in the diary, she yep. talks about how he would take inappropriate showers with her, and there's the question of she. It literally says in her diary, "Was I molested? I think so." <sighs> yeah. Oh, okay. No, that's I've heard that. I've heard that that, that is crazy. Before. That I mean. That uh, the the family leaves everything, and we and we uh, played it uh, the other day. Jesse Waters from mm -hmm. Fox. He was saying, "What's up with this family? They leave all this stuff. They uh, all mean, these different places <laughs> all the time." And now she probably she probably left it somewhere on purpose. I mean, she's well, probably it's, it's, cry he's for making help. a really big think about it being released. Um, you know. She's very embarrassed by it, so I don't. I don't think it was an intentional thing at all. Mm -hmm. Um, mm, yeah. I don't know. I mean, like you know, Hunter Biden's a crackhead. It doesn't necessarily surprise me that he would forget his laptop somewhere long enough for it to become their property. Um, I don't know if Ashley Biden herself has drug problems, but to be honest, it wouldn't surprise me, especially if she was you know, molested by her brother and or molested by her father and grew up around a crackhead. You know, it, it, it's kind of hard to not be a drug addict in those situations. Well, she, she, that's what she was there for at that house. It was actually a uh, sober living facility, a halfway house. Oh, that's okay. where, See, uh, I didn't know. Yeah, they actually, okay. that's where the diary and the bag was all found. It was in a half, an undisclosed, I have not yet to been able to find any info on it. Of course, they're not going to name it. But yeah, it was a halfway house and she was there. And I remember reading another leaked part of it saying that she had been off of C and other hard drugs. So it is. Okay, so yeah, then she's a, she's a, they're drug addicts. So you can't really. <laughs> let's rely just on say, a drug addict. let's pray for them. I mean, yeah. There's nothing else we could do. <clears throat> nothing else. You know they're already in. They're uh, he's in office, and uh, you know they they changed all the laws in order to make this uh, this happen. I mean, yeah, and it was it was crazy. It was all rushed, and there was a pandemic going on. It was all just man, it was orchestrated, and uh, but anyway, what happened happened. Yeah, and from here, I think we just need to take a better approach than going, than just being on one side and and, and you know continuing this war. We need to figure out how to all live together and be peaceful. Seriously. Well, it's hard to do that when one side literally wants to send the other to the gulag 
you know, just because they sure. voted for Trump. Yes. You know, I don't know how, how do you begin to make peace with people who would rather see you dead? Here, uh, one, I, I don't, I don't know, but one, I, one thing you just have to, you just have to, I think, just pray. Like what we do is when yeah. we start this show, the prayer that we started saying now every day is, um, yeah. For the person who works at Google, who's in charge of the algorithm that suppresses us, would that person please have a change of heart, please God, and you know maybe find Jesus? Mm-hmm. Because well, it's, it's, it's hard to pray for those who are against you, but those are the people you need to pray for the most. I know. Well, that's so why we do it. Them. We're literally yep. doing spiritual warfare right now, every day, every single day. And we're trying to take the high road, the high road as an in incense enthusiast road. And then also just being a good person. And because it is so easy to fall into all of this, this, oh, yeah. this fighting. And what I've, what I've seen a mile away is the um, Christian nationalism thing. The Christian national, nationalism thing, that came out of nowhere. They invented that word in order to get people fight each other. I saw it from a mile away. Uh, now, oh, yeah. N- n- now, this country was founded on freedom of religion, not, not from, from it. it. And, and we had all these different states in the original colonies all founded on different religious freedoms. Maryland was Catholic land. Pennsylvania was the uh, Quakers, the Quakers, right? Yep. All these different states. I believe what, it was. You, do you have? Do you have? Um, can, can you put on mute? Um, when you're not talking, Kim. Maybe. Oh yeah, sorry. That'd be awesome. So when you, yep, yeah, when you, uh, um, um, I believe the Carolina, they all, they were. I know they were a Protestant, but I can't remember. I think it branched into like Baptist down there, right? But the, later, the the but po- it was Protestant, yeah. The point being, it was all that they've being. sold us a mm-hmm. bill of goods now, now, and they're doing it now. They're perpetuating it now. If you see what's going on, yep, you don't want to be a a, a a pawn for them either in what they're doing. That is true. They, they want they want soldiers on both sides. They're trying to build those soldiers based on this thing. Obviously, people that are conservative and with Christian convictions are going to be like, oh, that's, I'm a Christian nationalist. That's going to be the easy knee-jerk thing to do, and you'll see that already happening. Then oh, on yeah. the other side, you have the people that are basically all communist. godless, godless communists, communist. and it fuels them <laughs> I mean, because, yeah. yeah, you're right. Oh, this is freedom. Oh, this is freedom over or freedom from religion. They'll think they'll they'll they'll, they'll, they'll pervert meaning, it. They'll pervert it. They're meaning that, yeah. But the truth is freedom of choice. That's the truth true. is that church, mm-hmm. the physical church, and the whole idea of church, right? So the the just like sales is uh, the tangible, tangible intangible and sales. Yep. So there's an in, intangible and tangible element of religion, right? There's the faith that goes on, but then there's also the church right. building and there's the organization, uh, the, even the process of how they do the math and the, and that or, but, but that whole organization, everything there mm. with, with that brick and mortar place yeah, is, is a competing organization to government. That's why they don't like it. And so it's a uh, very dude. There's where, what other place can you be conservative than the Catholic Church? It's insane. What other Alex like- Jones? Have you ever seen the the the, the uh, some Alex Jones type um, conspiracies uh, more yeah. than in the Catholic Church? Oh yeah, a lot, a lot. No, have you ever have you mm-hmm. seen more than what you can see in the Catholic Church? There's a lot of conspiracy theories oh, yeah. that involve the Catholic Church. That- but I'm saying. These so these competing, these competing uh, groups of people, churches, mm-hmm. they don't want them to build those churches. They don't want people to have a haven of place to go to for community, to meet other people. They don't mm-hmm. because that is something that competes with their power. And communism always wants to take God out of the equation. They always do. Well, and it keeps people unified. I mean, it keeps- or they control it. Now, they now the re- separation of church and state is so that the government doesn't interfere with the church, not the other way around. Okay. Well, absolutely. There can't be laws without morality, and morality is largely based in the Christian principles that founded this nation. 
Correct. Well, yeah, oh, yeah. And you'll see a lot of people going away from that. Look at this. You know, you know what happened with uh, your mom. Uh, I'm sorry, your 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 aunt probably opined on this recently in a Twitter, one of her maybe her Substack article. I can't remember, but um, about all this, uh, uh, you know, the Christian nationalism stuff, right? Is she? Is right. she? Where where is she on this? On the on the rise of of the or on the attack on Christianity. Yeah, but I is it is it an attack on Christianity or is it an attack on like people that actually go to cuz what I think they're doing is they're getting people to fight over this like that it's um they're trying to get people to be hypocritical to infuse Christianity into the government. They're not getting the whole concept. They're getting confused yeah. with it. That's why the the everybody should go into their church and we should offer so it's an obvious it's an obvious thing that happens a reaction that happens within society when you see the libs of TikTok videos when you see all these libs of TikTok videos of things that are going on in schools how how uh, teachers are how the kids are growing up godless right I mean it probably has to do with the phones and unlimited oh, yeah. unlimited uh, education or unlimited information mm -hmm. at their fingertips they're seeing the wrong things. There's no like. Oh, it's, pharmaceutical, it's pharmaceuticals as well. And pharmaceuticals. Um, yes. Oh yeah. It's the influx of, I mean, but nobody it's is also, dealing with problems artificially. Everyone's dealing with problems artificially. It's days. it's also a secular society that has no religiosity whatsoever. And so what we're oh, absolutely. what we're talking about is uh, Genghis over here, my co-host. He he uh, came up with this. Oh He yeah. said that there should be a. Um, they, they should have elective in school that be. Around re religion, Wh whatever religion they choose. I'm talking at like a public school, of course, yeah. not like the yeah private pub school. public schools we're yeah. talking about. Now, th now people probably want these. The, the reaction they're going to get from the right is we need to put a prayer back in the schools. Like, like no, that's well, the wrong. That's the wrong thing. Right. What, what, because we are all uh, we're, we're not in those states anymore. Now no. we're not in those states that only had that religion. Now we're now we're in a jar no, of, of no we're religion. in a jar of M and M's. Mm, mm, okay, yep. We're in a jar of M and M's, and now we all have to deal with each other. So there should be, there should there needs to be faith. There needs yeah. to be uh, meditation and spirituality. It equals peace. There, these different religions are different um, languages, languages to, to God. God. And they're all different expressions, I believe, of the same God, to be honest with you. But it's all just people's different ways that they like expressing it. So yeah. and rather, than have, rather than have a secular society where nobody has God at all, which they fucking conned us into thinking is right, and it's not. Right. What we need to do is implement all the different... Like you said, I think that's brilliant. Yeah, all the implement. Uh, you you take it on elect in elective, mm -hmm. just like you're taking Latin, your English, or you're or taking English, Spanish, uh, Spanish or German, French, German, right? Whatever. Take a take a French religion Chinese. too. Learn about religion. Learn about yeah. Learn about be exposed yeah, but, to it. You don't have to do it. Be exposed to learn about it though. You don't have to. You know what I'm saying? You don't because that's that's part it. of it. We are we. It's part of it. Right. And if you don't, how have are you gonna get? How are you? My question is, and I, I get, I mean, I, I'm with you to a degree. Um, I just don't know how we're going to implement proper teachers that are going yeah, to yeah. fairly teach religion because these are the same people who are teaching our kids to be atheists, who are teaching our kids that drag is okay, that, and they're, they're exposing them to, you know, pedophilia at a very young age. They're grooming them, they're teaching them about anal sex, they're teaching them about oral sex. I just don't know if these are the same people that I would trust to teach about the Bible. That's, now and that's true. Crazy. It's that not going to, but it's, it's not going to happen overnight. What it's happened is was the yeast and the dough thing. Remember? Oh yeah. The, dough, the yeast has to rise. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, the dough to rise. you gotta let it, you gotta, what you do is you immediately like you start putting that in the curriculum and watch, watch them have to like say it themselves them saying it themselves is going to get into their subconscious somehow and affect them. Well, that's where I would be a little bit different. Just like when you hire a, uh, per se, like a German high school teacher, right? Like to yeah. teach the German language. Yeah. You're, you're hiring somebody that hopefully had 
the study of the German language under their belt. Yes. So, in a way, for the, the same with the religion electives, I mean, I think yeah, we'll find I would, them. I would. Find, I think we'll find the teachers. Yeah. I think there's plenty of people out there that would do it. So, well, I'm I'm going to share a very unpopular opinion, but to be completely honest with you, I think we need to completely do away with public schools. Okay, no, that's not a that's an interesting opinion to have. Um, did I you, think right? you know, as did you as know? My boss would say they're they're Marxist daycare, and they need to go. They need to go. You know, actually, I, I see that point a lot better. I kind of, I might want to retract mine because, you know what, if you, like, if it's a Christian school, a Catholic school, or whatever denomination, or Muslim or Jewish, there, right. your elective's there. You now have your trusted official because they're, you would believe to be that religion. Well, what know? I was going to say is, like, okay, if, if somebody is a quote-unquote likes, if they, if they say the West is the best, or if they they consider themselves a patriot, and they uh, have something disparaging to say about Catholicism, Catholicism really specifically, right? They don't know anything about Western civilization because Western civilization was created by Catholicism. The cat, the Catholic Church spread out throughout wet Western society, and they were the first ones to even bring schools around. They invented the concept of schools. Semester, that's well, like seminary, yeah. seminary semester. It, yeah, the, the the priests were the first teachers. Oh well, yeah, and yeah. So, yep. and so. They were the first teachers. We just learned Prince about this. We just learned about the saint oh, the other right. day who was yeah, uh, who, did it for, yeah, yeah, who created who yeah. created basically public schools in Europe. Yeah, that's what I that's what I was saying on him. Yeah, but but uh, yeah. yeah, but back then they didn't have the internet. Right? Yeah, of course not. Right? Yeah, they didn't have the internet. It's a little different now. You could learn if you want to, I guess, but I don't know. I don't really. And then think some people can, not not really. everybody no. Not anymore. I think probably about maybe 10, maybe 15 years ago, if you wanted to study something fully online, nothing, no other added help, uh, you could have. But you, nowadays, now you can't because you can't even find the things. Right. Like you can't find an opposing view. You can never put, find They'll it. put the ads there too, whatever the oh, first. Yeah. yeah. You got to go through <clears throat> pages of all that. Ugh. It's insane. We live in a crazy world. You know, I was having a conversation with somebody earlier today mm-hmm. and I was talking about like the fact that I, you know, and I don't want to go on and on about it because it's depressing and I don't want to be negative. Yeah. But I was going on and on about like how it's doing the show 96 times. Like mm-hmm. it's a, it's, this is a, this is a, um, just a, t- a, a test, you know, like a real life test in, 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 in life, if you go out and you want to start a digital business, like you want to start a virtual business, like a podcast or something, right. and you obviously have talent. I mean, is that, hey, Kim, do you think I'm not talented? Do you think that I don't no, know how I to would, communicate or something like that? Or No, uh, I wouldn't say that at all. Okay. So if you go out and you start a podcast and you do it 96 days in a row without a, without a day off, you're putting right. in a lot of effort into it. You can't just do it on YouTube and expect the algorithm to help you in any way, shape, or form. You can't. I just proved that to be true. Absolutely. I proved that to be 100% true. It will not help you whatsoever. And actually, I think it depresses it. Because at 1.3 billion Christians in this world, and we are providing a daily readings of Everything the Universal Catholic Church talks right, about, you don't think in a, in a interesting, stupid kind of way, uh, <laughs> from a different perspective. Right, you don't think that you're going to get a couple people, even a hundred people. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. That's that's why I know. That's why they can't trick me. They can't like make me depressed. Right. They go, oh, yeah. they can't because I know you can't trick me, and and I just go, wow. That proves it. Now, I wonder how many people are on this blacklist. Like you can be some of our friends are January 6th people. They're in literal prison. Like, but oh, some yeah. people are in a prison too. Yep. And they're unable yep. to get out of it. It's crazy. How long someone like me have to be in prison for? Am I allowed to have a voice? Am I allowed to start a podcast? Am I allowed to reach people if I put a lot of effort into it? I thought this was a free country. 
I thought no, because what? because of the way that you speak and because of your viewpoints, you're one of the people that's persona non grata, and that also has to do with who you affiliate with. We we you know we help and we support people who are you know deemed terrorists by the mainstream <laughs> media, and it's disgusting. Yeah. It it really is, and it, it's like wow, like oh, it's, it's, come. it's time for the Latin word of the day. Woo! Persona non grata. That was good. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to call back in in a minute. I just got to do something really quick, but I'll call right back in. All right, okay. bye. Persona non grata. That's what happens, man. That's what happens. Let me keep going with this. Hmm. Persona. Yeah, persona. What? what? Persona no, non grata. Non Look it up grata. right now. Okay. Look it up. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Persona non grata. I didn't even get a Latin word of the day anyway, so look it up and tell us. But just to go back over the saints, I just want to say one more time. Oh, yep. The death of the Lord's persecutor. Persecute. Per, precursor, August 29th. The martyrdom of Saint Yochanan the Baptizer. That was his actual name. St. John the Baptist imprisoned by the orders of the uh, Tetrarch Herod, but out of fear did not hurt him. During one occasion, Salome, the daughter of Herodias. Oh, okay. So it was Salome. whom John criticized for having an affair with Herod, her brother-in-law delighted Herod with a dance. Herod promised to give her anything she desired. Through the promptings of her mother, Salome asked for the head of John on a silver platter. Herod uh, had John beheaded. So we need, we got the, the name a little wrong. But that was that's actually like if you're going to talk about JLP. Right. Where he talks about how uh, some people worship the, the woman. Oh, he definitely did that. Uh, oh, Herod? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and then, you know what? He kind of got what was coming to him anyway. I mean, after that, he he lost a lot of military ex- expedition. Herod, he actually lost to his uh, father-in-law. His father-in-law decimated his army, <laughs> <laughs> and they claim that it's a little bit of righteous karma, like going back because he beheaded John the Baptist. What an incestuous, weird family! And and I'm glad he said that. I'm glad he said that. That's he was like, you guys are, like, yeah, he goes, you guys are total weirdos. And I'm, and you know what? You, I don't you approve. should not have done this. And it's just so weird. And he go, that, oh, really? Well, <laughs> we're going to cut your head off. He was like, I don't care. I Wait. don't care. You know what? You're a weirdo. And <laughs> it, it's worth me to go say ahead, that. Cut my head off. You're still a weirdo. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I wanted to mention some venerables. Right. Before Kim Coulter calls back. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So widower. Father, founder, blessed Edmund Ignatius Rice. Hmm. He was an Irish widower and founder. He worked as an apprentice in the company of his uncle, an established explorer of goods. He got married, but his wife later died due to an accident. He spent his time taking care of his disabled daughter. Subsequently, he dedicated himself to the education of young people, especially those living in modest conditions, founding the religious community of the brothers of the presentation. Ooh. Also in the venerables are a uh, maid turned founder turned beggar. St. Mary of the cross. Oh boy. She was a French nun and founder. Another founder, her original name. That means she founded wow. a group of other insane people yeah. high on hyper religiosity. Her original name was Jean Juggin. She okay. worked as a maid in a castle. Later, she began to develop her vocation to help the abandoned elderly. She rented a house and began to welcome old people who were alone and sick. She established the Little Sisters of the Poor. Due to misunderstandings, she was dismissed from the role of superior and spent the last few years as a beggar. Oh, my God. Wow. What happened with really? That's, well, that's and, and th- that's too bad. We just got to gloss over that. You guys that dig into that one. You should yeah. probably dig into that. Let me let me see the next one. See the next. Oh, got two more. Two more ladies. 
Also up for a venerable mention is the mobile tabernacle. Okay. St. Euphrasia of the Sacred Heart. She was an Indian Carmelite nun. Her original name was Rosa Eluvathingal. She belonged to the Syro Malabar Church, which is in commune communion with Rome. Now, you understand that that's not Latin. It's not the yeah. Latin Church, mm-hmm. but they're also but they're in communion with Rome. They're also they're an offshoot of they're in Catholicism, but they have their own little mm-hmm. spin. They're a pigeon, a language, a pigeon language. Okay. Or no, it's an accent. It's an accent. Like an accent. Yeah. It's an accent of the language. Sorry. It's an accent of the language. She served as the prioress of their convent. Ooh. The nuns called her the mobile tabernacle. They called her that not only because she spent many hours praying in front of the tabernacle, but also she was able to make the people feel Jesus' presence through her wo- words and guidance. Hmm. Last but not least in the venerables today is a World War II martyr of chastity, Blessed Teresa Braccio. She was an Italian young layperson and martyr of chastity. She lived the simple life in the fields, distinguished by family virtues, piety, and rare Christian modesty. During the Second World War, she was kidnapped by a German soldier. She first tried to evade his brutal intentions by bringing him close to homes. She preferred to give up her life rather than lose her purity. The soldiers beat her to death for uh, defending her chastity. Wow. So another almost rape victim, right? Uh, Now that's actually goes along with uh, what we talk about today. Not being, not allowing yourself to be raped. It's like, kill kill me instead. Mm -hmm. Kill me instead. I mean, that's the same thing. It really is. She died with the same passion of her belief of purity as John did of his uh, uh, his honesty. Right. Wow. Yes. Okay, yeah. You need to wow. wake up, dude. You know what? You need to I wake up. Right now. You need to wake up. There, you need to, you good, need, though. you need to marry in your life. Fans and so You need to marry, you silly Mary. Escalade. You really need a Mary. That's true, the You can call everybody Mary. And me and my friends would love to break his balls. Slick and Crazy Mario were my best friends. Slick got his name because of his hair. Mario got his because he was just crazy. I'll kick your little fucking asses for you, you bunch of Marys. Oh yeah, Kim. I know you calling back. We were just about to do our Mary thing really quick. Go right ahead. Okay. The Mary thing, this is an Icona, uh, Icona Grapia de Nuestra Senora de Peña Francia. It's basically the miraculously and can- canonically crowned image of Lady of Peña Francia. Mm-hmm. Nuestra Senora del Santísimo Rosario de Peña Francia de Naga is considered as one of the most renowned Marian images in the Philippines and in the world. Peña de Francia refers to the uh, mountain between Salamanca and Caser- oh, Caserques, Spain, where a black statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary was found. In the Philippines, the devotion began in the year 1710 by Reverend Father Miguel Robles de Cova uh, Rubias. I, actually, I know that happened in um, Costa Rica too. But then it has the uh, or, orelo on top, mm-hmm. a halo studded with. The, uh, basically, I'm going to explain it to you, okay, Parker? Yeah. I'm showing a meme right now, right? And it's and it and it has this image. Of Mary. 
Right. And then over it is this halo that they call the Oriello. Areola. Areola. Oh, it's the Areola. That makes sense. A halo studded with 12 stars and plated in gold. Symbolism of Mary in Book of Revelation. A woman clothed with the sun and on her head a crown of 12 stars, right? In Revelation. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Rastrios. Rastrios. That's, That's an adornment placed on the face to emphasize the splendor and radiance of the blessed mother and child. Mm-hmm. Then there's the crown. There's a crown on top of her head. Uh, a special honor is given to Mary as the queen of heaven, earth, okay, by placing an earthly crown. See who is the mother. She's the mother of Jesus, the king of creation. Okay. And then the plancha de oro, a large metal sheet covering the body. Uh, which serves as protection dress of the image. And then the Manto de la Virgin, a large cape that acts as the dress of the image, usually made in gold, embroidered, or beaded. The standard colors of the Manto um, is usually white or gold. Devotees show their respect to the lady by kissing the manto. This manifestation can also be referred to with the woman with hemorrhage in the Bible. I'll just touch um, his gar- garments. I will be healed. Jesus then replied to her daughter, your faith has saved you. Underneath it, there's like a stand. This is basically like a little, I don't know. It's like a little doll. It's a little doll with a crown on top, a halo, like it's crazy. The little face, it's a little small little face in there. Right. And then it's standing on this like underneath the, like this chalice thing, this base. It's called the Pay Anya, the base of Our Lady. It, it symbolizes the heavenly throne of the Virgin Mary. Thus, it is sometimes shaped as a cloud adorned with angels. Anyway, sorry to nerd out on the Mary thing. We just, we just did that whole thing because we do, if I come upon something that has to do with Mary, there's a lot of images and and stuff. And I'm, you know, I'm an apologist for Catholicism. If you have anything that you want to discuss and say, Hey, it's kind of weird that Catholics do this. Mm -hmm. I will explain it or apologize for it or (laughs) or try. Oh yeah. Or defend it. (laughs) Oh, are we on there? Yeah. Or is Kim still on? I'm still on, yeah. Oh. That okay. was directed to you. I don't know if you heard that. Oh, yeah, no. Um, well, I mean, I, you know, I myself am a follower of Catholicism. You are? Um, I, I am. Um, I assumed I, I, you I, were I currently... Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not Jewish. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because I... Uh, not to get all personal, it doesn't really even matter anyway. Isn't Ann Coulter Jewish? I thought she was. Oh, no. Ann Coulter is certainly not Jewish. She's a Presbyterian. Okay. Oh. Cool. Okay. I mean, not that, not that there's anything wrong with it. We'll no. Just, just, and none at all. We'll no, but... To, no, no, no. We're, our family, um, my father and, and her parents... Well, my grandmother was a Catholic... Um, and she, um, and I believe my grandfather was a Presbyterian and Anne and my father and, um, his, and my other, and my uncle are all Presbyterians. Um, I would confirm the Presbyterian myself at the age of, I believe, 13. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, this is awesome. This is awesome. Myself, I definitely find myself leaning heavily towards Catholicism, more towards, um, Dude, I'm having a, a pregnancy brain moment. Um, not secular. Um, it's uh, I I don't I don't believe in the current pope. Um, do you, do you, um, I'm so sorry for, for I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to let you talk more right after this. Um, so that's that. Is this a re- recent conversion? Yes, I would say it's a recent conversion. Um, at least in the last couple of years, especially since becoming a mother, um, I just I, I identify more heavily with the the beliefs of Catholicism than I do 
even with the Presbyterian denomination. What what was it that that um, made you feel that way? Well, I just think I think the, for part the relationship with the Mother Mary is a very important part of Catholicism that I think a lot of um, denominations don't focus on enough. Mm. Um, I believe that um, as far as the the different denominations of Christianity go, it is. It's the it's the longevity and it's I I find that people who have you know it, it's well also majorly the people I find in Catholicism um, they are they're rejecting modernity they're um, pushing traditionalism and they are you know like you said before they're deeply rooted in the fundamentals of this nation so as somebody who considers himself a nationalist. You know, I guess, you know, the naysayers, whatever, you can call me a Christian nationalist. I don't take that as an insult. Um, no, but, but you know, I, I you know where you know where I'm going. Don't don't. F- I mean, no, you do whatever you want, but you understand what I'm saying. Don't be a pawn for them because they want us to fight each other. We have to think of other ways to no. do it. I think. Uh, I think. Like, well, what I'm saying, yes, I'm a nationalist, and I am a person who follows the beliefs of Catholicism. So. You can call that whatever you want to call it. You can give it whatever dirty connotation you want to give it. I don't think of myself as an army for that, as a member of that army per se. I just, I, I believe in in the fundamentals. I believe in the preservation of family and um, the worship of the the one king, and that is that is God and His Son Jesus. Yes, but there is an ebb and flow in um in Catholicism that they do honor the female um vibe the female oh, yeah, the female definitely. the female um energy female energy like the yeah. female energy of god and there is man like we talked about yesterday we talked about the complexio um take that down for a while she's going just yeah. if she's going through wind just bring it down you know uh but the complexio oppositorum which is was our latin yesterday right yes it was that 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 uh, that ebb and flow, mm-hmm. that antithesis. Where would where would you be without the male? And if there's a male energy and everything, all life is about the antithesis. And may, the meek shall inherit the earth. Right, the meek are going to mm-hmm. be the strong. And yep. Ex- all it's always the opposite. So if there's a male godly energy, there's a female there godly has to energy be Female too. energy somewhere. And and it's not. Like people don't real people the the, the Christian Bible thumper people don't understand mm-hmm. about Catholicism is um it's more meditative it's very spiritual it's more spiritual than they're used to uh you know a mass mm-hmm. is a recreation of like the last sub it's everything about about Jesus is Jesus' right. whole life like uh, Bishop Barron was explaining the mm-hmm. other day yep. just to paraphrase his stuff he was talking about. With with his Shia LaBeouf interview, yeah, he says that yeah, you're going from the quiet years, the 33 quiet years, or 32 quiet years. So it's like the the priest doesn't really say that much, and then he then he then he does. He starts saying stuff, and then it goes through the whole uh, breaking of the bread, and and then his death, and everything like that, all within the mass. And that's what it was. That's what it was meant for, and that's what it was created for. And then the Latin tradition was going mm-hmm. for like five hundred years on record. Before that, probably, yeah, some some kind of it was going like that too, obviously. But but probably, oh yeah. Now now, are you familiar with this whole Kim? Are you fam- yeah. familiar with this whole uh, Latin um, traditional masses thing? Are you into that? Go- are you into going to those by any chance? Are you aware of this? Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find um, a Catholic church near me um, um, that I feel comfortable in necessarily. Well, the last the last Catholic church I tried to attend, um, you know, they had a you know um, a, a, a gay flag outside, and oh. you know, do what do what you will, but like, I'm sorry, please don't force that into my Catholic church. Right. Wow, that's um, kind of that would turn me off too, and I would go to a different church. Yeah. I just, yeah. Not be it, you know, not because you know, of whatever. I'm, I'm, I just, I don't want to see that at my church, man. That it's not. I want to see all, any, any kind of flag. The only kind of flag I want to see there is the Vatican flag. Is the Vatican flag? 
That's the it. The Vatican flag, exactly. That's I don't, it. I, I don't, want to see the Vatican flag. I don't want to, that. That's insane. I mean, that's like it. a symbol. You're putting that's a symbol it. up. In my, I already have symbols that I that I deal with there. I don't need another symbol. We have enough symbols there. Right. No, that's true. Well, that is true. Cur- currently, I attend the Methodist church. You but do- it's a it's a very it's a very sweet little church, and it's you know one of the first actual church communities that I've ever had the pleasure of being a part of. Um, you know, everybody knows everybody. Everybody takes care of everybody. You know, they love my kids. They love my husband. They well, my pastor actually got my husband his current job. You know, mm. it's a very community oriented church, and um. They they are not very far off of my own beliefs as as somebody who follows Catholicism uh, as somebody who okay I want to I want to say this just before we go, I don't want to I am not gonna I do not ever force people or say anything to make people do like be a Catholic or anything like that right um, everybody you know I think that uh, all the different denominations of Christianity are accents. Of the mm-hmm. same language. Mm-hmm. Uh, that being said, there are different factions within Catholicism now. There's, I don't know if you're aware of this, but you know how insane politics is. That same stuff is going on through it within the Catholic Church. There's all kinds. Oh, of, there's all kinds of schisms and insanity going on. There's a, a total subculture of people that are very right right leaning very and oh, they are oh, yeah. quote unquote traditional uh, hold radical. on radical traditional catholics rad trad catholics rad trad catholics yeah yes they and and they believe in um that you know Vatican 2 what happened what happened it, it, happen it, after it itself, Vatican 2 yeah. is not does not that's not tr- you know not real. it's, it's fake, not real it's, uh, whatever the the, the pope's uh, ever well. since then, have all been anti popes. Yep, and um, yeah, and well, then, the current pope is, is pretty treacherous. If we're going to be honest, he is. But there is a deep rabbit hole you have no idea about. Maybe, but there uh, is. It, it is crazy. I would love to write a column about it for a National File. I'll tell you. I could. I could tell you all about it. You know, I could, I could, I could tell you all about the insanity, well, or maybe, or you. maybe you can, or you can research it. Start researching it. But but you can, can you, do that. You can definitely quote me or something like that if you want. I was gonna say we can write it. We can write it together. I'll give I'm, you a credit. Uh, you can quote me. But there is a huge. Okay. okay, check it out. Listen, let me break this down for you. There's a there's a crazy TLM. It's TLM, traditional Latin mass, and everybody goes very. Mm-hmm. They're very right. They're the most right. The right wing of all the uh, people in the Catholic Church, basically. Mm, yeah. From what I've seen so far, definitely yes. Yes. So, the, before Vatican II, Vatican II. All right, everything was. I'm going to give you some layman's terms right now. I'm going to get you up to speed. Mm-hmm. The baby boomers destroyed the Catholic Church. They destroyed a lot of things. The hippie movement destroyed. I was going to say of they destroyed a lot. <laughs> so you can put that in, the, in in your article. Please use that. Please, you know, don't. You know, I'm going to tell you a lot of brilliant things right now that I've thought about a lot of times. They're all like zingers. Oh, um, well, I'm ready for it. <clears throat> well, so yeah, so the baby boomers destroyed the Catholic Church. They basically, um, uh, Vatican II happened. It was a council that uh, the Pope brought in because they're they're basically they're, they wanted to attract more people to the faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, because people were not, they were not interested at that point. They were into, you know, being hippies. Correct. So in order to modernize the church, they changed from Latin. Latin was being practiced since the 1500s. They, they started, uh, they also, uh, the priest was turned around the other way. He was mm-hmm. facing Jesus on the wall and, and the altar. They had an altar and, uh, you know, there's candles. There's like six candles. It, it you had. There's a reason why those were lit. Um, yeah. Before the before the priest uh, approached the altar, he said, "Please, you know, absolve me from my sins and stuff." Mm-hmm. I'm about to approach the altar. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Basically, and then everything was done in 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 Latin, and and you would face as the person who was 
the the prayer, you know, going mm-hmm. there to pray, you would face the same way as the priest. And it, and and then you really understand what it is, you know, what what is church? Church is just communal prayer. And the priest is to lead right. the prayer. You can go. Now this is some good stuff. Mm-hmm. Please credit me. <laughs> this is intellectual property stuff, seriously. Mm-hmm. You can go start working out at the gym or you can do it with a Jane Fonda workout video, right? Yeah. If you want to. You could take the aerobics classes at, at at the gym though. You could. Or you could do it in your house. Or you can do it. Yeah. Or I could work out with, with weights in the house. Like a, mm-hmm. get a little set up in the garage. Or something. Set up in the yeah. garage, maybe. And then or I can go to the gym, right? Hello? Uh oh. Oh. Oh, I guess she lost service? Yeah. That's great. Well, you haven't gotten to the meat and potatoes of that anyway, to your whole line. No. Well, you were describing. <laughs> Leave that with the note. All right. All right. What we'll a- see what happens now. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. I have a feeling she'll call back. Yeah. She probably, yeah, probably just drive. I think she said she was driving, so probably lost service somewhere. Probably. Mm-mm. TL, uh, speaking of TLM, look at this. Look at what they, they've taken out of out of the... Uh, FatEnzo.com Look at this. See what they've taken? Look at all that. It's rewritten. Just showing a video right now um, that I got off Twitter. It was it was it was from um, Massive. You know the guys who uh, who made the documentary Mass of the Ages. Mm-hmm. You gotta check it out if you haven't seen it. It's a three part movie all about how uh, it used to be Latin. Everything used to be in Latin. Wow! Outstanding. Yeah. Wow, that was a lot of blacking out or rewriting of. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that was scary to see. Mm-hmm. I mean, how much of that? It was kind of like that. Time. It was like that. Uh, that that redacted document, the Biden document. Oh yeah. That they're making the memes of and stuff. Yep. <laughs> it was like that. Still though, like dude, that was a, a precursor. The church was at, like. Not only were they the West, mm-hmm. they bring the West everything. Like, think about all the things that you that you say. Like, what is a cardinal sin? Mm-hmm. Is that from being a cardinal? Well, yeah, because you know what? The cardinals are the ones who pick the Pope, right? What's a cardinal sin? Look it up. Tell me what the definition is of it. Uh, let's see. A serious error of judgment. Okay. okay. Let's see. What's another one here? A very bad or serious sin in Christianity. Hmm. I mean, I get it where it's meaning like a cardinal. I'm using it like that. Like mm-hmm. the cardinal meaning who picked the Pope. That the highest, the next highest level of them being the Pope, right? Yes. So I feel like they kind of translate it as in a cardinal sin, just like how it's right under the Pope, but it's not as bad. Look at these, look at these cardinals who speak truth to power. Look at this, speaking of the TLM. We need more bishops. Oh, sorry, not cardinals. Oh, my bad. Maybe some of them are cardinals too, or can you be that or no? No, I guess they're just bishops. We need more bishops of the Catholic Church like them who aren't afraid of speaking the truth and standing for the faith. I guess cardinals wouldn't be uh, elected if they had that TLM thought process. 
This is from Catholic Connect Twitter. We need more bishops of the Catholic Church like Cardinals Sarah. Oh, there you go. Cardinals yeah. Sarah, Muller, Burke, Arinzi, and Zen, Archbishops Lefe, Lefebvre, um, Viano, and uh, Cordileone, Bishops Fele, De Galera, Galerida. There's a bunch of other ones. Who aren't afraid of speaking the truth and standing for the faith. All these bishops are very outspoken in criticizing the heretics inside the church. Mm. Mm. Nice. Yep. And I found out also cardinals are leading bishops and members of the College of Cardinals. So, yeah, they can be bishops, too. Or they are bishops, I mean, as well. So well, Yeah, I get it. Nice. And by the way, mm-hmm. because you wouldn't think that there was a left wing, left and right wing paradigm within the I Catholic mean, Church. You're, you wouldn't, but there is. But there is. There is. And there probably is in a lot of there isn't a lot of organizations. Well, I think no matter There's, what you yeah. are in, there's always gonna be the pros and cons or your left and right, and that's it. I got this Twitter thing. It says, yes, some people seem to identify with their political party more than with the church. That's idolatry, it says. Being Catholic, mm-hmm. in my opinion, is a commitment to the truth, somebody says. Yes, you shouldn't really. Well. You shouldn't really, you know, be, <clears throat> have that as a uh, main priority. Look, being Catholic, this is from autistic Catholic. Autistic calf on Twitter. Being Catholic isn't about being conservative, progressive, or somewhere in between. Being a Catholic is about being in subjection to what the church teaches and believing the church's doctrines. And then someone said, which, but which, oh, this is uh, Pamela Roth, Roth Farms, okay. But which century? All Christians believe Mm -hmm. what the church taught until the 8th century or so. That's when things started to evolve exponentially leading to the 1054 schism. Think of the unity. If all Christians simply professed what the early church professed. Yeah. But before that, they didn't believe in anything. They were like total scum who were like doing whatever they wanted to. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. They're all uh, pagans and stuff. They're godless people. hmm. Kind of weird. I don't know how to think of this. Mm hmm. Hmm. I want to re- I want to think about this a little bit more. Come back with a na- better answer. All right. Well, I'm still going I don't know. here. Yeah. Oh. Now yeah. there's a uh, <clears throat> it continues on with this little conversation on uh, the Catholic Twitter. Mm-hmm. You do know that the whole left right spectrum originated in the French Revolution, with those of the left persecuting helpless Catholic peasants, and those on the right defending them. You knew that, of course. Then uh, autistic Catholic. Actually, I didn't. But I think that's particularly irrelevant to what I was saying as those terms are more strictly defined by the powers that be as opposed to those that bear them. Take, for example, in Star Wars where the Empire called their enemies the Rebellion, but those fighting against the Empire called themselves the Alliance to restore the Republic. Okay, and then okay, that, that person it. responded, try reading something like Von uh, Kuhnhelt, uh, Laid Heen's Leftism Revisited. To see the perennial moral and philosophical differences traceable over centuries that define the real and fundamental differences between those political impulses. All right. Leftism revisited. Can you look that up? Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. I I hope... um, it doesn't matter though, but I hope whatever. I hope I was hope I was able to teach. I guess Miss mm. Coulter. Oh yeah, enough about what's going on for her to write a satisfactory article. Hope so. Oh, yeah. oh wow! I really wish I had an outlet because I do have some brilliant ideas, but we, I guess I'll just can completely be squashed. Other people can just take them. It's fine. It's fine. Whatever. I mean, I don't. <laughs> I think you're thinking too negatively. No, no, I'm not thinking negatively. I'm not saying it. I'm just saying I'm just saying that not we don't have a 
platform. You know, it's, it's uh, yeah. And it, and I see people, and I don't want to, ju- whatever. Right. You don't want to weigh your yourself against other people, but it's it, it's an obvious. There's an obvious algorithm going on. And it's it's pretty terrible. There, there's something going. Yeah. So what were you? What'd you find? Um. Yeah. No. It is a book, and it's the, it is by Eric von. I'm gonna pronounce. I'm probably butcher it. Yeah. But, don't say it again. Yeah. I don't need to no. hear that, man. Oh well, no. Do you have any information to add to this? No. no? Really. Okay. No. <clears throat> All right. Let's do our prayer of the day. All right. Let's hear that voice. Enzo.com. It's time for the Catholic Prayer of the Day. Very professional, Patty. Good job on the soundbite. And dude. now for some completely fictional bullshit. Oh, stick to the credo, Patty. Stick to the credo. Outstanding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we got a prayer of the day that I saw. It is called the Healing Prayer at Bedtime. You should probably pray healing, this, Parker. Healing Prayer at the okay. healing prayer at bedtime. Can you find it? Believe so. <clears throat> Does it start with Lord Jesus? All right. Well, name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. <sighs> Lord Jesus. Through the power, hey, can you pray and not, don't look it up, doesn't matter. Lord Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, go back into my memory as I sleep. Every hurt that has ever been done to me, heal that hurt. Every hurt that I have ever caused another person, heal that hurt. All the relationships that have been damaged in my whole life that I am not aware of, heal those relationships. But Lord, if there's anything that I need to do, if I need to go to a person because he or she is still suffering from my hand, bring to my awareness that person. I choose to forgive and I ask to be forgiven. Remove whatever bitterness may be in my heart, Lord, and fill the empty spaces with your love. Amen. And no many padres, it feely, it's spiritus sancti. Amen. Amen. All right. That does sound that does sound like a nice prayer before bed. It is. It is. Let me just check. All right. I think that's it for the day, right? We're at one forty five. We're good. Oh, in the bad news. Did you see this that Rogan um he he said to vote Republican. Ooh, he's actually picking a side now on like I uh, he before? apparently did. I don't know, you know. Yeah. Sounds sounds a little juicy. I It I does. Would... It does. Check this out. Fatsenzo.com. And I'm hoping that now that this is over, people are going to, you know, recognize that some serious errors were made and not repeat those. That's the best you can get out of it. So what do you tell those people? Vote Republican. <laughs> That's what a lot of them are going to do anyway. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, more than a million people transferred over to the Republican Party, uh, I think, in 2021 alone. Find out what that number is. But, you know, you look at guys like Ron DeSantis, who kept Florida open and, and had some pretty reasonable policies in terms of, like, what what to do about COVID. And, you know, he mapped it out on television. He was, you know, widely criticized for this, where he was saying, like, we need to protect our elders. We need to, you know, make sure that medical care is available for, for those people and everyone else. You should be able to do whatever you want to do. And protect your freedom. Outstanding. Pow. Makes sense. I mean, he's not really saying anything wrong on that. However, the only thing I think I would disagree-ish, if I would call it that, is that it's not necessarily just vote unanimously Republican. It's, I think people have to get back to not voting per se for a party, but voting for who the individual is. Like, 
It doesn't matter. Don't run down the list of all the Republicans. I'm sure there are. There will be in the future when the balance is back. There will probably be good Democratic candidates again. I'm just putting that out there. There will be. Yeah, you're I mean, right. I mean, so we. But the pendulum be, has to swing that way right now. It does. And now I would. I guess I would like to put it is yeah. Vote Republican, but vote for the right kind of Republican. Don't vote that Republican in name only is where I guess it is where I'm driving it a little bit. Yeah. But hey, even uh, Rogan is taking a stance. Look at that. How that comes around to the to the John the Baptist thing again, once funny. again. He never took a stance before. And now he is like he never really. I don't think he ever really took a positive definitive stance on where he, he never was. said that well you know he, maybe yeah. that was just a joke he could just pawn that off as a joke maybe i gotta hear the the whole episode but i guess it was on a recent episode but i was thinking about that carnal thing man or car or, or wait right. it's cardinalson yeah there's also carnalson right carnalson you've heard carnal knowledge right yeah, yeah. carnal knowledge is sex you don't know if it is it, oh, isn't yeah. f-u-c-k um for what is it? Something on uh carnal knowledge, right? Carnal, I don't know what that uh, write it in there. Okay, what? yeah, carnal knowledge, yeah, with F F U. It stands for for you know the word. These are all root words of that, or what, man? You know? <laughs> so the F word originated from unlawful carnal knowledge. Yes, for unlawful carnal for knowledge. Unlawful, yeah. All right, yeah. So doesn't that sound like a lot like cardinal? I don't know. I was just, I was just, this, these are just hmm. stupid thoughts I'm having, man. I see that. I was see, I see that. I, how, how Western civilization is totally. It affected everything. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Catholicism has affected everything. You know, the root. It's all found in the root words. I mean, then yeah, probably. I feel like it would. It it probably come from. What do you think is then? a carnival sin? What do you think that could be a carnival sin? Like two clowns killing each other. Uh, like yeah, it would it be yeah. a would it be a carnival sin if I if I uh if I well no that <laughs> because you're just an idiot you're not a clown <laughs> oh my god so Mister Mister Genghis ah uh-huh. let's do the meditation of the day All right. I could rag on you live on the thing is that fun to do should I no I shouldn't right. Probably not. <laughs> if you want to not have no, there's no, tea. there's no point in doing that. No, but there's definitely like uh, now I'm learning about work too. You can't exert too much effort before we do the podcast either. Mm. The golden hour is is first thing in the morning. No, I'm no, I'm that's what I'm realizing now. First thing in the morning. <laughs> All right, let me do my uh, mm. the meditation of the day. Hit that button one more time. August 29th, baby. Meditation of the day. It's called Witnessing to the Truth. And uh, this is by St. Salarius. Sorry, Caesarius of Arles. Hmm. And I know we, we've, I think we've read him before. Yes. Okay. Witnessing to the Truth. The fact that John was delivered over to death seemed to indicate that the letter of the law, a mere shadow, was destined to die at the approach of the law of grace. The head of the prophet is brought to the table of Herod. Blessed John had told him that it was not right for him to take the wife of a man who was still living. And for this one admonition, Herod had him thrown into prison. Look at the distance between injustice and justice, brethren. Even when the judgment of God delayed, 
Even in this world, Herod was blamed for so many years, while John was praised just as many years. Truly the memory of the just will always be blessed, but the desire of the wicked shall perish. Let our minds be aroused by the examples of the saints, for by imitating such deeds, perhaps we will sometime attain similar good things. If it is not our fortune to end this life in defense of the truth, at least let it be our lot to amend our life after we have heard the truth. Let us speak on behalf of the truth, and whenever we know that it is in difficulty, let us hasten to defend it as far as it is possible, knowing most certainly that the defender of justice is going to receive the crown of martyrdom. For if Christ is the truth, doubtless the man who has borne witness to it will be martyr of Christ. Now, it often happens that even we ourselves do something contrary to truth and justice. For this reason, let us not only rebuke others who do these things, but let us also punish ourselves with fasting, vigils, and prayers, as often as we act contrary to justice and also redeem our sins with more generous almsgiving. Then, while we are rebuking others and with God's help amending our own lives, if we do not merit to receive the martyr's crown, we will at least deserve to obtain the forgiveness of our sins. With the help of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom is honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 No many Padres. Well, actually, in our pre-praying today, that's yeah. our intercession. We're going to be asking for, oh, Saint John the Baptist to intercede on our behalf. You didn't even know Saint John the Baptist. You couldn't even say that right now. What do you mean? I don't know. Okay, so we're going to ask him to pray on our behalf. In no many Padres. It, Feely and Spiritus Sancti. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for life. Thank you for love. Thank you for listening. Thank you for letting us podcast and sleep at the same time, apparently. That's really awesome. What? Yes. Uh, Lord, we pray for the godless to find you and find peace in our lives. We find and, and, and let them find that peace through through uh you know spirituality and meditation. And Lord, we ask that the that we're that we're good. Do you have a problem? Everything's good, right? What? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, because yeah. I was making a joke about you being sleepy, and you, you know it's true. Yeah. I would so do. okay. So is that good? I don't want to feel guilty for saying a joke. I I said that because it's true. I spoke truth. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So I, we, we, anyway, we pray for, uh, um, people of this great land to find peace and to find it on their own spiritual paths. And if that path leads to Catholicism, Christianity in general, whatever, but Catholicism specifically, let it be done. That's awesome. And if it comes through by way of this podcast, wow, that's a miracle, truly a miracle considering <clears throat> the algorithm and the algorithm person. Anyway, Lord, we pray for all the people in power, positions of power. Let them lead with righteousness. Let them kill off their egos. And Lord, we pray for Mother Earth and every being herein with special consideration for the following. For the entire Biden family, so they, they may walk in God's grace and know that their hearts are forgivable. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Uh, for the radical traditional Catholic and for everyone to unify together and not be separated over differences, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Uh, for, <laughs> for the boomers and hippies that ruined everything so they see the error of their ways and try to make it better, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Uh, we also pray for Joe Rogan. So that he may continue to be the person that he is, but still be also neutral. 
we pray, or <laughs> no, to be the person he is and to keep on promoting himself. As no, he, uh, thank you, God, for letting him step up and and make a and make a and, and speak truth to power. Okay. Thank you, and and let him keep doing that. What are you talking about? We all right, Lord. Okay, no, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. And Lord, I ask of, of you, if you can show us to have the same kind of passion that John the Baptist and the other venerable venerable mentions had today, that we may be dedicated to your love and devoted to your love to know you forever and ever, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Also, Lord, we ask again, so those gatekeepers, that they may have a conversion and feel love from you that you truthfully have for them. And that they will mirror it to everyone else out there. And that everyone with the so prayers and then silence and the nestled of their heart. No, those are two separate things. Oh, okay. So first on the, still on the gatekeepers, that they have a conversion, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And now, Lord, we hear all the prayers that are nestled in the silence of our hearts. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And then, Lord, just please, please help us to be better at what we're doing and to understand what we're doing and to take it seriously. Dear God, honestly, I've been doing this a, lot, a long time here, and this is a genuine thing right now that I'm going to ask you. This is a lot of... Uh, a lot of effort that I'm putting in. Give me a break, God. Let something happen here. Lord, I offer all these prayers to you. We offer all these prayers to you. For ourselves and for everybody else that we just mentioned. Especially ourselves, though. That... <clears throat> That our souls are sick, so we offer these up to you, God, because you're the best physician there is. And so I hope that we all are able to walk that line, keep our eyes on Christ, and live our and live just like John the Baptist did, and have conviction in what we do and, and speak truth to power when we have to. Okay, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In nomine Patres, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. The uh, podcast is ended. You guys can go in peace to love and serve the Lord, Lord and, and be, be outstanding, outstanding to, to each other. Outstanding. All right. Pow. And remember, God loves you. That's right. God loves you. So please, you know what? See you later. Have a good one. We're not going to put on you to tell to do the to bribe or anything like that. It doesn't matter. Do what you got to do. Couldn't even do it with conviction anyway. I do not want to hear Parker over here tirely, tirely, uh, lazily with no energy. Try to tell people to subscribe. I'm not going to listen to that right now at all. So you guys have a good one. Appreciate you for tuning in. <clears throat> and we'll see you tomorrow. How do you like the artwork? Look at that for the people that are watching. I do love Pretty the funny. Artwork. I do. I think so. Uh, remember, we are just having fun. It is, it is all out of good humor. Not to be offensive. Mm -hmm. That's right. Vaya con Dios. Go with God. Outstanding! Pow!